Line number one of thunderstorms is fizzling out across Dane County as we speak right now, but the first one weather team will be tracking a second line of storms for later tonight. Also, the Sauk County community holding a gathering tonight one year since James Jablonski went missing from his parents' home. And later, News Renow sits down with the Baraboo superintendent to get his account of what happened at the high school's graduation involving him and a parent. We welcome you to News 3 Now at 6. And we start this evening with the latest on that severe weather potential for southern Wisconsin. This is temperatures have warmed up considerably across the Badger State today. The News 3 Now weather team has been busy keeping an eye on the radar. Let's check your first warm forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Hey, Eric. All afternoon we've been watching a line of thunderstorms coming out of northeastern Iowa. And the good news is here, and I can show this here with the wind tracker, you see this green line that stretches just east of the Madison downtown area over towards Sun Prairie, down towards Edgerton and McFarland, Oregon. What this is is that outflow. This is the winds that are blowing out ahead of the main area of showers and fizzling area of thunderstorms. This outflow, when that happens, it kind of undercuts and cuts off the energy from the shower and thunderstorm activity. And this is why we see such a significant decrease in the intensity of that line of thunderstorms, which had been severe, producing widespread wind damage across southwestern Wisconsin. Nonetheless, it's still heavy rain. Mesa, Maney, Cross Plains, Purdue du Sac, Dane on 12 and on highways 19. It could be a heavy downpour also in Monroe right now. That's the strongest of the cells that we have over southern Wisconsin at this point in time. Future track radar though showing as you look off towards the north and west, 11.45 p.m. We'll let that play out one more time. Look up towards Viroqua, Juneau, and Adams counties. The first run weather team will be tracking that next line of thunderstorms that could pose some strong winds across southern Wisconsin. Current conditions outside right now and in Dane County, we've had that line of thunderstorms come through. It's brought those temperatures down into the upper 70s. We'll track that next line of thunderstorms coming up in Maine weather and when we can expect that line to end and how Thursday's thunderstorm threats are looking across southern Wisconsin. All right, Alex, thank you. With an alert day in the forecast, be sure to download our free First Warren Weather and Traffic app available right now in your App Store and Google Play. Today marks one year since a Sauk County teenager went missing. Police say James Jablonski left his home in the overnight hours of June 12, 2023, in his parents' van. They later found that van near Devils Lake State Park, and since then, Sauk County authorities and the Jablonski family have held several searches for the teen. Sauk County law enforcement officials say they found evidence in the woods that James was trying to live as a survivalist. They also say electronic devices that James used show he searched about possibly traveling out of state. Now, we know the FBI has been assisting local authorities in the search for Yoblonski, and they've given a lie detector test to several members of his family and other potential witnesses. Back in July, the Yoblonski family offered a $10,000 reward to bring James home. And meanwhile, the Sauk County community is still holding out hope that Yoblonski will be found alive. And right now, county members are coming together for a gathering of hope on the anniversary of his disappearance. And that's where we find News Street Now's Maddie Heinz. Maddie? Yeah, Eric, that's right. I'm here in Sauk County right off of Highway 12 at that gathering space where community members are coming together tonight to spread hope for James's return. Now, as you can see, like Alex was talking about, we are experiencing some of that weather, getting some of that downpour, but that hasn't stopped friends and family from showing up. We have friends and family right off the side here. They're gathering together. James's dad is here. Uh, I spoke to him. He says he's been in consistent communication with the Sauk County Sheriff's Department, but they have not received a lead in months. He says all he wants is to know where James is. He also brought balloons with him. There's a poster of James taped to the back of his truck alongside other family members that brought the very same things. Uh, the event starts right now at six, so we're going to see what happens here, if more people show up, if the rain stops, and what these family members have to say as they hope for James's return. For now, reporting live in Sauk County. I'm Maddie Heimsch, News 3 Now. All right, Maddie, thank you. Anyone with information on James Jablonski's disappearance is asked to call Sauk Area Crime Stoppers. The number right there on your screen, 888-847-7285. A lacrosse man is now in custody after his wife was found dead earlier in the week. 39-year-old Zachary Fritz is charged with first-degree intentional homicide. Fritz's wife was found dead Monday in the town of Shelby with stab wounds and bite marks on her face. Fritz claims she took her own life, but this isn't Fritz's first domestic incident. Court records show he was found not guilty by reason of mental defect for a 2009 domestic abuse incident. He was institutionalized for two years and then
then granted a conditional release in April of 2011. Fritz was discharged from that program in 2015 for good behavior. In La Crosse County Court today, a judge ordered he be held on a $1 million cash bond. A Wanakee man is in custody after allegedly driving and then running from police in Monona last night. According to police, the suspect was speeding and ran a red light on Stoughton Road. Officers tried to stop him, but he continued driving down Highway 51 towards McFarland. The driver later got back on the belt line and would crash while attempting to exit on Fish Hatchery Road. Police say the suspect then got out of the car, took off running, but was eventually taken into custody. A loaded gun, drugs, and cash were all recovered by police. The Wisconsin Better Business Bureau is warning people about a recent scam costing over $8,000. This scam involves a contractor showing up at your door claiming that your driveway needs repair. They offer you a discount on those repairs because they're working nearby, they say, and usually don't give any details on their pricing or for their business. They'll then haggle the price with you and take a large fee up front. Once that transaction is complete, the contractor either will do unprofessional and shoddy work or simply leave without doing any work at all. So be wary of those unsolicited offers. It has been almost two weeks now since an now viral video of a parent rushing the stage at the Baraboo High School graduation put a spotlight on that community. Today, our Braden Ross sat down with the man who was confronted on that stage, Baraboo Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Rainey Briggs, to hear what happened on the stage and how he's trying to move forward. That video from the graduation went viral online, even picked up by international tabloids like the Daily Mail and TMZ. But now Dr. Briggs is giving us an inside look at how he felt on that stage. In that moment, I'm kind of like, well, is this a photographer? Uh, but as he descended upon me, you know, I'm kind of like, oh man, what is, what, what is he doing? Um, and as he approached me, he says, no, you're not. And at that point, I'm still not you know, understanding what he's referring to. And then as we got back further on the stage, he said, you're not touching my effing daughter. Dr. Briggs first took on the role of Baraboo superintendent in 2021. Just three years before that, the district had been launched into controversy after a photo of a Baraboo high school students doing a Nazi salute went viral. This incident has shown another negative spotlight on the district, but Briggs says he wants to change that narrative. You can hear what he said about that in my full interview with Dr. Briggs this Sunday morning at 1030 on For the Record. All right, Braden, thank you. Former President Donald Trump returning to Wisconsin soon. According to a release from his campaign, Trump will be visiting Racine next Tuesday. There he will hold a rally focusing on how he thinks President Biden has failed Wisconsin. This will be Trump's first visit to the Badger State since being found guilty of 34 felony charges in New York. Meanwhile, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will be in Wisconsin tomorrow, scheduled to be in Green Bay as part of the launch of the Seniors for Biden-Harris. It's a national grassroots effort, an organizing program to engage and mobilize seniors voters across the nation. Dr. Biden will be speaking at a political event in the afternoon before heading off to Duluth. The Wisconsin Supreme Court is keeping a lower court's ruling that bans mobile voting sites in the upcoming presidential election. While it's a win for Republicans, the court also ensured that municipalities across the state can determine where to locate early voting sites. They just can't use mobile sites. The order came just ahead of Wednesday's deadline for municipalities to designate alternate locations for voters to cast early absentee votes. Wisconsin state law prohibits locating any early voting site in a place that gives an advantage to any political party. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, the Wisconsin State Fair giving us an early look at some of the newest food offerings this year. Plus, the Black Men Coalition of Dane County putting on a performance at Overture Center this weekend. What they hope audiences will take from the production. You're watching News 3 Now. Voted Station of the Year 2023 by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. We all share the same roads, but when an accident happens, we don't always share the same consequences. Ruber Law Offices has been winning for people injured in truck accidents for more than 35 years. One call, that's all. Here's to the farm and fleet dads, the ones who work hard and get the job done right, the ones who take pride in what they do and take the time to pass it on. This Father's Day, get your dad a gift he'll love, like this continental pizza oven, just $39.99. $30 off a 20-piece gear wrench ratcheting wrench set. Lund roll-up tonneau covers, $100 off after sale and mail-in rebate. Plus, a Blaine's Farm and Fleet gift card makes the perfect Father's Day gift. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. 
Ruffles Buy More Save More sale is back. The best time to get the new room you've been dreaming of. Because the more you buy, the more you're going to save. Save $100 when you spend $19.99. Save $200 when you spend $29.99. And save $300 when you spend $39.99. And make your new room more affordable with Steinhoffel's 36-month 0% financing. The Buy More Save More sale only at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. From midnight tweets to drinking bleach to tear gassing citizens and staging a photo op, we knew Trump was out of control when he was president. Then he lost the 2020 election and snapped, desperately trying to hold on to power. Now he's running again, this time threatening to be a dictator to terminate the Constitution. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Trump wants revenge, and he'll stop at nothing to get it. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Sunday after the Tonys, a difficult path to parenthood becomes a story of hope. I could see myself reading a story just like this to my child. How a local man's late night vision inspired his next chapter to do something good. Sunday on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Moving forward. Welcome back. The Black Men Coalition of Dane County is bringing a powerful message to the stage at Overture Center this weekend with a story about the complexities of the criminal justice system. The Kernel of Truth is a play telling the story from the perspective of inmates, and it hopes to show communities the struggles that inmates face, and some members of the production themselves are former inmates. It really sheds light on many different factors in the prison system. Um, the redemption, some of the abuse, some of the misjustices. Um, you know, I, for one, am formerly incarcerated, and so I fully understand. And in light of recent investigations into the treatment of inmates in the Wisconsin prison system, the performance is generating dialogue at an important time in the state. There's stuff going on in the state of Wisconsin right now um, in the prison system, and so... It's a, it's a right now piece that really, that, that really speaks hard of what people are going through. The play starts showings this Saturday at Overture Center. There's one at 2 p.m., another at 7. You can find tickets at the Overture Center website. The Wisconsin State Fair has a little something for everyone, as it always does. In recent years, there's been no shortage of unique food offerings for the masses. And today, eight finalists were picked for the Sporky's Food Competition. They are the Cool Ranch Doritos Pickle, Deep Fried Lemonade Bites, Dirty Chai Cinnamon Roll Lumpia, and Elote Corn Ribs, Elvis Nachos, Hot Ham, and Glazers. Loaded baked potato churros and the rise and swine. All fairgoers will have the opportunity to try those finalists as well as other entrees and entries during the Wisconsin State Fair from August 1st through the 11th. And round two of voting for Madison Magazine's Best of Madison is underway. Unlike the first round, you'll only be able to vote once per category, so carefully consider those choices before making your pick. You'll get to choose from a wide variety of categories under food and drink, arts and entertainment, health, lifestyle, and much more. Voting runs through June 30th. Just head to channel3000.com and search for Madison Magazine. And still ahead, a local softball team holding a celebration for its oldest member. Plus, it is one of the most dangerous times of the year to be a teenage driver, how parents can help make a difference. And some severe storms are expected to move through later tonight. Alex pinpoints exactly where they'll be when we come back. You're watching News 3 Now's First Warm Weather with Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Voted 2023 Best Weather Coverage. Rest comfortably with brands you can trust at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Create a unique and stylish room with made-in-the-USA products from companies like Smith Brothers of Burn. Select from a wide variety of sofas at a great price. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Get an 11% rebate on your siding project in Menards. LP Smart Side products are the number one brand of engineered wood siding, offering versatile style, texture, and workability. Plus, it's backed with a 50 year product warranty. Accent your siding with Novick hand split cedar shake panels. Now $16.89 after 11% rebate. Shop in store or on Menards.com and get an 11% rebate on all siding. Save big money at Menards. The biggest steak sale ever is this Thursday through Sunday at Hy-Vee. Save big on delicious New York strips. 
bacon wrapped sirloin fillets, and mouth watering ribeyes. This sale is huge, and so is our dad sized 25 ounce Big T T Bone. For the best steaks around at the best prices around. Don't miss the biggest steak sale ever, Thursday through Sunday, only at Hy-Vee. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. You may not know what to make of Eric Hovde, but if you're getting older or have a loved one who is, Eric Hovde has a plan for you. Eric Hovde thinks people living in nursing homes should not have the right to vote. That's right. If you're in a nursing home, you only have five, six month life expectancy. Almost nobody in a nursing home is in a point to vote. Stripping seniors of the right to vote? Eric Hovde, what's wrong with this guy? Imagine trying to take on one of the big car companies. It's not easy. Yet this year, one local law firm finalized the largest compensatory verdict in state history against an automaker, over $38 million. And it was no fluke. That same firm has been holding big car companies accountable for faulty designs that cause injury for over 50 years. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. Let the design team at Wanaki Furniture ETC help you find your inspiration and transform your room. Every style, every budget, our creativity, passion, and expertise will help you design your dream space. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, moving forward. Well, most schools are on summer break now, and that means more teens are out and about. It's a good time for them to have some fun, but... Our Meryl Hubbard joins us now to explain why summer can also be a dangerous time for young drivers. Meryl. Eric, across the country, about 2,100 teen drivers are involved in deadly car crashes each year. The National Road Safety Foundation says 30% of these crashes happen between Memorial Day and Labor Day. In Wisconsin, 584 people died in traffic accidents in 2023. While we don't know the specific number of teens involved, we do know that driving distractions like smartphones, other passengers, and reaching down for items can be especially tempting for young drivers. Any type of distraction can be a recipe for disaster. They may not see a potential problem up ahead. They may not be able to respond to it as quickly because they are distracted. Their mind or their eyes or their ears or elsewhere. The foundation says these distractions are key factors in the spike in teen driving deaths during the summer months. The National Road Safety Foundation is a nonprofit organization for driver safety. For more information, you can visit their website at nrsf.org. All right, Meryl, thank you. Some storms moving through right now and more coming later tonight. Alex has a complete forecast. Yeah, we had round number one that came through. It fizzled, and I'll show you why it fizzled in just a moment across the center part of the area. And then round number two is on its way and still tracking some more storms for Thursday. Heads up. As we get to Wednesday, through at least Wednesday of next week, so we're talking Father's Day all the way through the middle of next week, a warm and very humid period, and that's going to be the fuel for more thunderstorm activity as we carry forth beyond the Father's Day weekend across southern Wisconsin. Basketball observed 64 mile per hour wind gusts. We had winds approaching 60 to 70 miles per hour over southwestern Wisconsin, producing considerable amounts of tree damage and also some power lines down in Basquebel and in Lancaster. As that line of storms raced off towards the east, it produced what's called a gust front. You can actually see this stretching just west of Watertown, just west of Fort Atkinson, nearing Janesville. This green line is that outflow boundary or that gust front that's pushing out ahead of the main showers. So when this occurs, it undercuts, it cuts off the showers and thunderstorms from any moisture and then they fizzle out. But that doesn't mean that it's still not raining hard across portions of the center part of Dane County, Middle River Point Road, Schrader Road, University Avenue, Old Sock Road, that rain's coming down at a decent clip. And that rain, of course, can be impactful too. And in Monroe, we had 42 mile per hour winds just reported with that area of showers moving off towards the north and towards the east rather quickly. Here across Dane County, our current conditions right now with our Edgewater Skycam still showing those heavy raindrops that I was showing on Radar 3000 not too long ago. Temperatures slipped from the mid 80s to the upper 70s. The dew point's climbing up there and that's because we're adding these raindrops, which adds a little bit more moisture to the atmosphere. 
at 80 degree temperature. It's pretty close. We got the showers at 77. We'll be in the mid to upper 70s with still a shower, maybe a clap or two of thunder at 8 o'clock. As we head towards 10 o'clock, on the muggy side, temperatures in the middle 70s will be eyeing up the next line of thunderstorms, which I'm going to show you here momentarily. Alert day conditions are expected to continue overnight for another line of thunderstorms that could produce wind and hail as main threats across southern Wisconsin. The Storm Prediction Center has a level two out of five north and west of Dells, north and west of Richland Center, Madison, Monroe, Janesville, Beloit, Watertown, Platteville, Darlington. You're level one out of five for severe weather tonight. And this is why. Next line of thunderstorms coming in from the north and west, approaching Juneau and Adams counties, over towards Vernon County, Richland Center, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Then we have Lone Rock, Boscobel, stretching up to Lodi and up into portions of Marquette and Green Lake counties at 2 o'clock in the morning. That line quickly slips to the south of the area by the time we get to the 6 o'clock hour on your Thursday morning. Temperatures muggy starting in the upper 60s to near 70. And we got to watch exactly where this front sets up here across southern Wisconsin could transverse right from Grant County to Iowa County to Dane County and just south of Watertown and it's south of that front where we think the better threat for strong to severe thunderstorms will be on Thursday. Not widespread enough that we feel it's alert day condition worthy, but we'll be keeping an eye on that. As I mentioned, as we move out beyond Saturday going on into Sunday, beyond Father's Day, the temperatures turn up, the heat turns up, the humidity turns up. We could be looking at on and off storms all of next week. Some of those will prompt alert days as well. Thank you, and for this alert day or any in the future, once again, we want to remind you to send us your viewer photos. The easiest way to do so, simply scan the QR code on your screen or just head to the website and click Submit Your Own. Otherwise, you can always email us at tips at channel3000.com. Well, after weeks of delays, the softball team in Madison is finally celebrating its oldest member's birthday. Larry Richardson turned 88 two weeks ago, but wasn't able to play softball with his team due to the constant rain washing out their games. But today, the first baseman took the field in the Greater Madison Senior Softball League. Richardson says this is his 69th year that he's played without missing a single year. He attributes that run to his good friends. Some of these guys I played with in the younger leagues many years ago, but most of them are guys that are from, uh, a lot of them are from this area, Barneville, Blanchardville, that area. I enjoy playing, and as long as I can still play and uh, be fairly productive, I'm going to continue to play. Now, Richardson used to play in the outfield, but has since moved to first base. He says he's thankful for the support and hopes to still be playing when he hits 90. And coming up in sports, Edgewood is on to the D2 final. How the Crusaders got it done in their state semifinal game this morning is next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Win a hand paint jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings. Going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Get solar and get saving with Olsen Solar Energy in the Madison area. When you install solar panels on your property, you're protecting your future. You'd be surprised to learn how much energy you'll collect and how much money you'll save. Whether you're considering a small roof mount system or large large ground mount system. It doesn't cost you anything to find out if solar panels are right for you. Get solar and get saving with Olsen Solar Energy. Stop into our location near you. Learn more at OlsenSolarEnergy.com or give us a call. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. Upgrade your garage, patio, or basement this spring with our beautiful cutting-edge concrete coatings. Our coatings are four times stronger than epoxy and guaranteed to increase your home's value. For a limited time, save up to $500 off your project. Plus, call during this program to see if you qualify for payments starting at just $30 a month. Welcome to the house spa. We always knew that we wanted to grow, and we couldn't find the right location. When this spot appeared, we're like, gosh, if we can get this location secured. We both approached Olivia at Tobacco Credit Union, and she walked us through the paper 
paperwork and the process in order to get this project started. The best thing about working with DePaco was they also showed us other available opportunities that could help us actually reduce our loan rate. So they are partners with us and with the help of them, we've been able to create this beautiful space. Salisbury Healthcare is here to help. To help with your shoulder pain, your knee injury, that hip that bothers you, with your foot or ankle pain. We focus on quality. We focus on results. And take time to listen. So that your care is the best care. For you. 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 For you. We're here for you. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics. Listening, healing, caring. It's in our nature. Win a hand paint jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Jeep Grand Cherokee and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings, going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. After a 13-year drought, Edgewood is back at the state baseball tournament. It's their sixth trip to Appleton, and the two times the Crusaders have reached the finals, they were crowned state champs. Edgewood looking to add to that this year, but first they'll have to get past Kettle Moraine Lutheran in the D2 semifinals. Fifth inning, tied at two, and Bennett Cagle does his job. Now, the sack fly isn't pretty, but it gets Chet Kramer home to give the Crusaders a 3-2 lead. And let's just say Davis Halbleib was working overtime at State Farm because in the sixth, he adds some insurance. The junior splits the diamond to score another as Edgewood is on to the Division II championship game with a 4-3 to three win. Well, I don't think you can explain how excited everybody is. I mean, it's a dream come true for a lot of these kids uh, to have that opportunity. Uh, and I know they're going to be ready to go. I mean, they've been, they've been building for this all year. Now we get the ultimate op opportunity, uh, state title game, to kind of see what we can do. Well, Sun Prairie East trying to get to the Division I championship game. They're taking on Oak Creek in the semifinals as we speak. And they're up 5-4 to four in the sixth inning. A rubber match between the Brewers and Blue Jays. Now, last night, the crew were 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position. Well, Willie Adamas fixed that in the six. One on for Willie and two gone. Adamas serves up a two-run jack to center, part of a five-run inning for Milwaukee. They beat Toronto 5-4 to four for win number 40 on the year. Well, fresh off another trip to the Final Four, Wisconsin Volleyball now knows the path they'll take in the regular season to get them ready for another deep run when it's tournament time. Kelly Sheffield and company begin with the first serve showcase against Louisville, then head to Pfizer Forum to take on Texas and Stanford. They'll welcome Marquette to the Fieldhouse on September 17th. Twelve days later, they're going to open up play, Big Ten play at Minnesota and Nebraska circle this one on your calendar comes to Madison on November 1st obviously we can't go through them all but they're all good games they're, they're the not moment. messing around yeah. with that schedule yeah. no doubt about it all right we want to get to a final check of the forecast Alex good news across Dane County right now in areas east that area of showers and thunderstorms is fizzling but that's only line number one we mentioned last night that we would have two lines and that still looks like another line of storms will be approaching the area as we head towards that 11 12 o'clock hour Look at this line of storms approaching Juneau and Adams counties over towards Viro over towards the Viroqua area, leaning into right south central Wisconsin by the time we get to two, three o'clock in the morning. Gusty winds and some hail and heavy rains would be the main threat from those thunderstorms. We could be looking at a few more storms developing late tomorrow afternoon. It looks like it could be a, a loud, overnight loud overnight period tonight. Alex mm -hmm. will keep us posted. We'll be back tonight at 10, folks. Thanks for watching.